Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. That's Gloria Copeland, and that's Dr. Caroline Leaf, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Praise God. We're going to have a good time all the day and all the rest of this week. And those of you that were with us last week, you know that uh, we've got a, uh, we, we have a, this very specially anointed Dr. Caroline Leaf in this, in this studio today. And it's, it's so important to have uh, God's view, not just the scientific view or not just the common view, but what does God say about it? And particularly when you're dealing with the spirit or you're dealing with the mind, the soul, really, uh, the spirit, then soul, then body, in that order. The body being the least important. The spirit and the soul made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions, the, the intellectual part of you. The spirit and the soul live on when the body is gone. The spirit, your soul is part of your spirit. Therein is the mind. But now, what happens to the mind if the brain is not functioning correctly? Mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a dilemma. You do. Because the mind cannot express itself. It, 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 it's, it's locked up in a in an, a place of, of incapacitation, then the, then the spirit and the body are severely hindered, particularly when it comes to doing any, uh, obeying God or doing anything to bless and, and to uh, uh, carry out God's assignments in the earth. So we need people like Caroline Leaf Amen. that God has called as a, a, a specialist in that part of the kingdom. Um, Gloria and I were called in the arena of faith. Now, we, we deal with and, and talk about a lot of other things, but that, that's, that's our major thrust. That's what God told us uh, over 50 years ago, teach my people faith. Yeah. And so to have you here is a pleasure. Oh. And it is, a, it is a divine opportunity yeah. for all of us. Thank and we you. want you to know we appreciate you. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored. Thank you. Father, we thank you for sending Caroline to us. We open our hearts and we open our minds to receive revelation from heaven. And we thank you for it. And we give you all the praise and the glory for it, Lord Jesus. In that great and precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's thank open... You to our, what I like to call the golden text for last week and this week in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. I li and I like to read it this way. But he has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. I love that. So to deal with a sound mind, you have to have a sound brain with which it can function. Exactly. And through which, really is a better, yes. better phrase. Yes, exactly. Through which the mind functions and expresses itself. Yeah. And, um, I, and I will re remind us again of this. And Jesus talked about the rich man, Lazarus, uh, the beggar, died and was carried into the bosom of Abraham into paradise. And the rich man was carried into hell. And one of the first things Abraham said to him is, son, remember. Now his brain was not there, but his spirit and his mind were. His memory, 
his emotions. He got emotional about his, about his family. He, he doesn't want them to come to this, this burning hellish place. And, and he, he's, he's he, now all of a sudden he's very evangelistic and he's, he's begging for them and, and so forth. So all of his emotions and everything are intact. Mm -hmm. The point being, the memory is not in the brain. The memory uses the brain that stores memory, but life's memories are inside the spirit of a man. It's, yes. it's categorized and it's all in there. Exactly. I read, I heard you say the same thing. I read after uh, Dr. Ben Carson. And he said, <laughs> if anybody could ever get to the place where they used 100% of their brain, they would rule the world. Now, Quote the figures. They're so astonishing at the data that's in this, this little pumpkin <laughs> and the, the millions of, of just things that's in there. Okay, so you want some numbers? It's amazing. Yes, I do. Okay, let me give you the numbers. Let me speak loud so you can hear me. Yes, please. <laughs> so your brain's about the size of your that's two loud. fists. That's loud. <laughs> I'll have to ask God one day. I'm a public speaker and I have the quietest voice. <laughs> so anyway, it makes me work harder. So your brain is the size of your two fists. It's made up of about 100 billion neurons, which is 20% of brain tissue. So there's another 80% of different brain tissue. We only understand around about 10% of how the brain functions. Each neuron, and there's 100 billion neuron, each neuron, for example, as you are listening to me now, at speeds of 10 to the 27, which is faster than 400 billion actions per second, you are transforming my words and all the stimulation around you, visual and so on, into physical structures inside of your brain. So when I say, say you, it's your spirit and your mind are taking what you're hearing, generating that energy through the brain, the brain responds and genetic expression happens and you actually physically build at that huge speed little protein structures on top of the neurons, little branches. So as you're listening to me now, you're growing these branches. You can grow anything from a few thousand to a few million branches. If you have a few million branches, for every, you grow a branch for every piece of information that you're gathering. So in a, in a talk like this of around 20 minutes, we will speak about 5,000 facts. So you'll grow about 5,000 branches holding our information. Those branches are made of proteins. Those branches, you can grow, as I said, anything up to a million plus. You on these 100 million, it gets even bigger. You can eat inside one neuron, and you've got 100 billion, more or less. Inside one, we have these very important little structures that we call microtubules that do a lot of things, including being involved in memory. So when you meditate, they're activated. You have about 10 million per neuron, and there's 100 billion neurons per brain, and that's only 20% of brain tissue. Then those little microtubules break up into small, so for every branch that you grow, they break up, so you have more and more of them. So one neuron has 10 million, but if you have a million branches growing on the one neuron, then that 10 million multiplies into more millions. Each of those millions and millions and millions of microtubules are made up of little tiny proteins. They're like little rolled up, like a, a sort of a, a sheet of like little beads, and they roll up. And so there's millions of those things. Each of the little beads, which are little proteins, are quantum neurobiological computers. And that's what we are using. It's almost like that's where the spirit is and the mind are working into those little computers and they operate like these little quantum energy computers that we're building with our thoughts. And that's where our thoughts, the mind part of our thoughts are stored and they connect with the physical part of where our thoughts are stored. And we have Trillion, trillions and kabillions and gazillions, we don't even have the number of words for those things. Those. One, and we have kabillions and gazillions, one is more powerful than the entire, all the computers on the entire planet. 
So, so now if you ever get I mean, confused, you know why. <laughs> it's, all the, it's all those things in there going. Exactly, exactly. But that's just the power. So God has designed that kind of power in our brain, that kind of, I mean, you're starting to understand this now. This is memory research. I've got a whole lot in this book about the memory research to show the magnificence of our design. And that is only, your brain has to be brilliant because your mind is even more brilliant. Oh, yeah. Because your mind oh, is connected to your spirit. Yes. So your spirit works with your mind and it's got to express through a very complex structure. And then you add so. to that, once a person accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, Changes and, and the, the, the spirit is recreated and brought back to the level with God, then we have the mind of Christ. Exactly. Which Christ is the Greek translation of the word Messiah, and both Hebrew Messiah and, and uh, Greek Christ is the English word anointed. We have power. The we same have so much power. Anointing power. Exactly. Available for our minds that Jesus functioned in while he was on the earth. Now you see, that's the thing. I mean, that is so, oh that's God. mind blowing in a good sense. And, and if we get a revelation of that, when we get a revelation of what it means to get in a rhythm with the spirit, literally we get our minds renewed and in a rhythm with the spirit, we are accessing that kind of power. And we see science showing us the impact of that power. We don't even need science to show us. We have our gut instinct. We know, for example, if we are in a toxic mindset, or we are grumpy or wake up grumpy, or whatever, we know the day goes wrong. We know that if we speak um, horrible words to someone, we know that we feel horrible and that they feel, we feel the impact. So we don't need a scientist to tell us what we instinctively know to be true, that we as humanity have life and death in the power of our tongue, which is coming from you know, all those scriptures, it's there, it's, it, it's in existence. You break someone or you build someone with your words. And you know, I saw this in my practice during Kenneth. I saw this so much. My patients would come into my practice with, I chose, let me give you a bit of background. I practiced clinically for 25 years. I'd done brain research for 30. I still do brain research. I still do clinical trials. I work with teams of doctors, neurosurgeons, neurologists, neuroscientists. We're starting a huge clinical trial in January um, where we're looking at non-pharmacological interventions for people with anxiety and depression. In other words, no medicine, mind. Get your mind right, get your life right kind yeah. of situation. So I took this approach in my practice and I've translated all of this into my materials and whatever, but essentially I would work with the worst of the worst. Everyone, there was always this population that people didn't want to work with in, in, in the world of therapy, the, the adolescents and the really difficult people. So I chose in my practice from the beginning, from day one, to take those with the worst brain damage, the worst emotional problems, and get into the worst parts of South Africa to actually work in the trenches with people that have been abused, raped, etc., etc. So I've had extensive experience working with broken humanity for honestly close to 30 years, hands on broken humanity, rejected humanity. And one of the first things that I would see in, in and it came from experience, etc., was that people had this impression of themselves that they didn't measure up, that they weren't good enough, mm -hmm. and that they had no, and that took away the sense of purpose and hope. We spoke about hope yes, in, in last week's Friday broadcast. And when someone lo had loses sense of purpose and hope, which is totally tied into identity, and they don't feel that they measure up, they then have there's this meaninglessness. There's this, and it leads to tremendous inner conflict and tremendous confusion. And then people start becoming the failures that people tell them that they are. So the mind then changes the reality of the brain. You spoke, as you introduced the segment today, you spoke about how if our brains aren't working properly, then our minds can't mm -hmm. express themselves. Our minds change the structure of the brain. That's the power that we have from God, the mind of Christ. It changes the structure of the brain. So therefore, if we are going to think that we have our failures, we change our brain to become a failure. So our mind is changing the structure of the brain. The brain simply does what the mind tells it to do. Well, and that know, is I why just, we have I, to I renew something. our mind. It's something I've, I've known a long time, but I just more clearly saw the process. If you, it, you have to think something before you say it. Exactly, very good. 
Now, you keep saying something. You keep saying the same thing again and again until it registers in your spirit. That's you. You are a spirit. You have a mind. But if it registers in your spirit, then it will begin to control your life. And I just saw how it controls it. The spirit then takes the mind and commands it to produce it. Exactly. And it will produce it. It will will grow it. Exactly. You've got it. That's exactly what's happening. you, you, You get the concept of this when Jesus said, the sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. These are they Mm -hmm. by the wayside Mm -hmm. where the word is sown. So, uh, and he compared it to uh, sowing plants. He compared it and so, well, he compared it to the earth. He did. What what is the kingdom of God compared to? He said, it is compared to a man Mm-hmm. who puts a seed into the ground. Mm-hmm. He goes to bed night and day, rises up. The seed grows. He doesn't know how. Mm-hmm. But the, when the seed produces harvest, he puts in the sickle and harvests it. So <laughs> the earth, the ground, God created the ground to grow. That's what it does. And, and it it has it in itself to grow. Exactly. You put something in the ground, it tries to grow it. Mm-hmm. That's the reason if, if you put a wooden fence post in the ground and you don't do something to treat that wood, the ground will do its best yes. to try to grow that. Yes. And so it does what it does. It breaks down the husk of the seed to allow it to grow, so it'll rot the bottom of that post. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ground will grow anything that you stick in there. It'll try its best to grow it. That's Mm -hmm. what it does. Mm -hmm. Now, he compared their spirit to that. That's learning. And I just, it just flashed through me. You you, you just keep saying that, and you just keep saying that, you just Mm -hmm. keep saying that, and it finally registers on your spirit, and your spirit says, all right, we have to grow that. We have to bring that to pass. Mm -hmm. That has to happen. Yeah. Because that's our assignment. And so it immediately, immediately transacts with the mind to bring this thing to pass. You're going to say it more now. You're going to say it more. You're going to do things to to advocate that. You're going to you're going to bring this thing to pass. And it may be a cancer. Exactly. And it may be wealth. It it may be healing. Depends on where you get your information. You create your next reality. If you renew your mind to this, you bring this to pass. Exactly. Whoa. I'm going to preach on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, if I may, um, at this time, or in the next episode, next broadcast, I wanted to bring up a slide of my theory, the research, which is exactly what you've just described, but it's all scientific language, only to show people, not to go through all the science, but to show people that there is a blend between science and spirituality, and that science, I, I spent my 30 years trying to understand this principle of when you think and feel and choose, you grow you grow, you are putting that whole analogy, you've just, there's a practical side to that. So whatever you think about the most is growing. Yes. Whatever you're focusing on, and in quantum physics, they actually have a term called quantum, the quantum Zeno effect, the QZE. And that's the repeated effort that makes learning take place. So memory is also part of what I've researched and the quantum Zeno effect. What does it mean to have a repeated effort? What does it mean learning's taking place? What does it mean you plant the seed and it grows? So the whole science behind that, if you look at an image of my theory now, they can just bring it up and show. But essentially I show that the, the whole spirit mind body connection and the response in the brain and if you as you're using your mind you are actually creating this physical change you literally like that fence post is growing the ground will grow you literally are growing with every thought that you think so whether you like it or not you are creating matter 
out of mind. You don't treat that wooden pole, you're growing something. So you are always growing. When you think you have grown a thought that has life forever. Every thought that you grow has life forever. So when it's a toxic thought, we obviously don't want evil and toxicity to constantly exist. So it has to be reconceptualized, hence acknowledgement, repentance, redesigning, etc. So we know once I was like that, now I'm like that. Thank so you transform. Advantage we have yes. to have to have been introduced to Jesus, to know him. And now his blood effect is affecting the past. Oh, glory we to can, God. We can actually, when you've just said something so quantum physics-y that you didn't even realize it, how the blood affects the past, there's a principle called retroactive causation. And all that means is the blood affects the past. It's retroactive it's causation, causation. And it's like retro prayer. It's literally seeing that in eternity, the present, the past, and the future coexist. And that as you're praying, as you step and you're really praying, connecting with the Spirit of God, you're stepping into eternity. So you're actually transforming how the future plays out in the present and how the past is going to play out into the future. That's quite a lot to get your head around, but that's what eternity is actually doing. That's what prayer, genuine prayer is doing. It's not begging God for something that already exists. It is accessing the ingredients of what does exist in potential form and transforming them into reality by the words that you speak, which is based on the thoughts that you are thinking, which is based on the power of the mind of Christ. Why right, you apply 1 John 1, 9 to that, that he is faithful, and just, righteous, mm -hmm. to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse. When we confess them. Exactly. So we're, tr and we're, and we're trusting Him with the sins of the past. Exactly. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I learned years mm. ago, years ago, long, long time ago, that I cannot afford my feelings. Yeah. Amen. I can't afford to be led Toxic by them. feelings. Toxic, yeah. yeah. I, I can't be afford to be led by that. Mm -hmm. I have to be led by this, mm -hmm. yeah. which yeah. eventually changes my feelings. The toxic, yeah. Yeah, it, it, but it, 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 the moment I believe I receive that forgiveness because he's faithful and just, not because I feel better about it, but because he's faithful and just, mm -hmm. what does that do? Changes my thoughts. I begin to change my words. And as I change my words, faith is released. Whoa, <laughs> hallelujah. And the, 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 the toxic part of that is just neutralized and totally. Just and and that happens out. scientifically. When you're doing what you've just described, you've taken this toxic thought. Now we've got all these trillions of thoughts that we've been building memories from conception. Um, so we've got all these thoughts that are in our unconscious, and there's so many, we can't think of them all at any one time. So they get stimulated by the, the events of life. So every, like now I'm talking, you've got all kinds of thoughts coming up in your heads, which is your existing memories. And you use that to understand what I'm saying or to process what I'm saying from your unique perception. So as soon as something moves from the non-conscious to the conscious and you become aware of it, it becomes malleable, which means changeable. So as you now get a revelation of the spirit or whatever word you use, which is Christian language, what's happening scientifically is that, now let me take a good one. Here comes the scripture that you've so said a million times. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you've added a new branch on because it's a new level of meaning. And I have this overwhelming insights. thought of we're out of time. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> out of time. Can we not go beyond we're time? We're starting to grow. I know. Exactly. Just... <laughs> That's not fair. Praise God. <laughs> we'll grow again tomorrow. Praise the Lord. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.